So I'm going to start 60 years ago and move forward through time. I'm going to talk about the origins from my own perspective uh, and how earthquake and volcano geodesy came of age. Uh, the early days for me, uh, I'll have some emphasis on USGS and the pre-GPS era use of EDM. Tom just showed you some examples. The geodolite in particular, that was the crustal strain project, and then also first order leveling. And I'm going to go all the way through up to the point where now we're using GPS with one second latency for early warning. Uh, this is a 1953 photo of Jim Savage on a Utah mapping crew for USGS doing topo survey. He's my mentor. He was using a slide rule. He was the computer in those days. Uh, George Plafker soon after used optical surveying leveling to map the subsidence and uplift from the 64 Alaska earthquake to figure out plate tectonics and that this was a mega thrust event, not a normal faulting event. The geodolite project, Savage and Prescott, Mike Lasowski as well, uh, used the geodolite to do EDM shots and used the plane to fly and get atmospheric corrections. <clears throat> Mike used uh, GPS for the first time to do co-seismics for Loma Prieta. About that same time, well, 1980, Mount St. Helens, uh, right before the eruption, the north flank started to bulge out. Goat rocks were going two meters a day. John Estrom was there to measure it with an EDM. He later became my boss. Uh, but when St. Helens blew, I was a sophomore in college, and this inspired me. I wanted to do something societally relevant with my earth science work, and so this is the way I went. I studied volcanoes using geodesy. John Estrom, my first boss when I got the job out of college at Long Valley Caldera, and his boss was Jim Savage, who you saw with the slide rule. Uh, so we were doing first order leveling and EDM work, and I was the rod mule. That's how I started. Then I moved up on the uh, little totem pole, and I became the go-to guy for doing the calculator programming. Uh, these were crucial for our field work, so this was a big step up from slide rules. You could actually, you know, <laughs> do a lot of really powerful calculations. Well, so I started grad school in 84 at Lamont, working with Roger Billum and John Bevan. Roger, at this first workshop I went to in 84, said, GPS is simply not good enough. We need to make it better. So he went and co-founded UNAVCO. Herring was there and said, I think we've heard GPS maligned a bit. He went on to do the atmospheric corrections, made it better. Um, you heard about SCUM, that's the same as TREX, and you heard about CASA. In Southern California, we also did the STRCs. This is how we all learned from UNAVCO. And then I taught a bunch of surveyors, and we did all of this survey mode GPS work. And I don't have any pictures at all from those days because all my pictures were of survey disks or tripods set up, and there were no people in these pictures. And I was like, that's because I was working on my own. Well, anyway, I'm getting behind. <laughs> Northridge 20th anniversary. Uh, what was really cool is that one of the insights we got from geodesy and GPS in the Northridge earthquake was also uh, disambiguation of the focal mechanism planes. We could see it was on a south dipping fault, just like Alaska 64. Plafker could see it was on a mega thrust. The other thing here is it connected us with the engineers that do critical lifeline engineering. We saw the tilt across the San Fernando Valley of 40 centimeters. But see, that took us up through Landers, Northridge, and earthquake geodesy really came of age in the use of GPS, but we were still debating the quality of the results and how GPS compared with EDM leveling. And um, so there was this EOS debate piece. Mike Beavis was editor and had Savage and Prescott write the pro and con pieces. Um, so Savage, who had been my mentor, said, GPS is not ready for prime time. And Prescott, who was soon to become my main mentor, said it is, so we did it. We, we didn't concern ourselves too much with whether or not it was really ready for prime time. We just went ahead and made it happen. We built the sign array in Southern California. Our main objective is to do the tectonic uh, interseismic, but also to capture earthquakes if they occurred and also transients. Here we are in those days, 97. Uh, we had a lot of fun. We, we did a lot of innovative things with monumentation and adapters and radomes. Here's Frank Wyatt, who was so vital to all of that, and also John Galetska. Um, we kept innovating. We figured out how to use the GPS in real time and across the San Andreas Fault to measure movement on the fault as soon as it happened. And so uh, this was the zipper array concept and the fault slip sensor. So we, we innovated it, but didn't have the funding to really do it. So now we're getting the funding to do it. 
So I've taken you through from the turbo rogue days of Northridge survey mode GPS to today when we're doing GNSS in real time with less than a second latency for earthquake early warning. It's been an exciting ride and thank you to UNAVCO and to the UNAVCO community.